I'm pleased to introduce our next speaker, who is Sandeep Ghosh, uh, based in, uh, he's the head of research for BBC Media Action India, and he's going to be speaking on the impact of audiovisual job aid in influence family health outcomes in India. Um, <clears throat> good afternoon, everybody. Um, I am here essentially um, to talk about um, one of the interventions which BBC Media Action does in India. Um, it's essentially how we use mobile technology uh, to promote a job aid which enables frontline health workers to go about doing their jobs better. I'm also going to um, present to you some of the preliminary research findings from the impact assessment study uh, which we did to see whether uh, this intervention works or otherwise. Yeah, just to put everything in the context, uh, shaping demands and practices, which is the uh, which is the uh, project in India, is a is a Gates project, and it's uh, it's a Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation project, and it's part of the uh, overall project which they call Ananya. Uh, Ananya is. Uh, uh, is uh, a collaboration between BMGF, the government of Bihar, and there are nine grantees out of which one is uh, BBC Media Action. And the overall aim of the project is to improve family health outcomes. Now under SDP, and, and, and the nine grantees are working on a lot of things, uh, both on uh, demand side as well as supply side, but primarily the demand side is being looked after by BBC. Um, and the mandate which has been given to BBC is to change behaviors associated with family health using a 360 degree approach to behavioral change communication. That means we can use uh, uh, IPC, mass media, meat media, mobiles, anything. Um, SDP overall is designed to impact the crucial 33 months, which is very critical, which is the first month of pregnancy all the way up to the second year of the child uh, at states, and we include state-specific communication. Uh, while you're pregnant, we talk about birth preparedness. Uh, towards the final trimester, we talk about things like, you know, cord care, thermal care, so on and so forth. Uh, uh, immediate breastfeeding, and then once the child is born, exclusive breastfeeding, then move on to when the child is four months, five months, talk about complementary feeding, introduction, and so on and so forth. There was a lot of challenges, uh, especially uh, in, 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 in community, uh, you know, using frontline health workers to communicate uh, family health uh, uh, messaging. The biggest challenge was that the audience was primarily rural. And rural, well, at least in India, does have connotations in terms of being more backward, being relatively more poor, and as you can see from the data, it's certainly media dark. So, quite obviously, a mass media approach was not going to work here. But there were opportunities, and the opportunities were plenty. Most importantly, as someone pointed out in the morning, there are more mobile phones than toilets in India, and there are 82% of the people have mobile access. Uh, more interestingly was India has a system of frontline health workers which are part of the government-mandated structure who go out and do household-level interpersonal communications at various stages of uh, pregnancy, various stages of child development, and so on and so forth. And in the state of Bihar, there are 200,000 200, of such people. And more interestingly, almost all of them have their own phones. So we had basics of a solution here, but there were caveats. We did mobile landscaping studies, and we realized that this, having a phone doesn't necessarily make them tech savvy. Only 9% ever used an SMS. So that means mobile phones in India, rural India, was primarily being used to, to you know, receive calls. They were hardly ever being used to even make calls. So the solution had to be very simple because there is a technical illiteracy. It had to be audio-based because, as you saw, there was a large amount of illiteracy to begin with. You, you can't have a text-based uh, uh, solution at all uh, for beneficiaries. So we said that why don't we take and create a job aid to support frontline health workers who are going there and doing IPC in any case and help them become better salesperson if you want to have it in that way. I mean, salesperson sell a, sell a product. These are the people who sell an idea or try and promote, a, uh, 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 promote behavior change. So what is Mobile Kunji all about? Well, it is a job aid. It, is, it's, it looks like this. It's actually quite nice. It's, um, it's almost credit card material. It's color coded. 
each page is a behavior or a part of there there are if you have birth planning then there are four pages of birth planning which has got uh, small messaging uh, messages here and so on and so forth it's a deck of 40 color coded cards and each message is some particular uh, theme uh, along the line of the 33 months what's the important part of it is that this is not supposed to be shown to the uh, 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 to the beneficiary or read out to the beneficiary it's almost like a uh, 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 like a checklist for the frontline health worker for their communication activities. Every uh, one of them have a unique phone number associated with it. It's a seven digit mobile, uh, mobile short code which the frontline health worker dials while the communication is taking place or when the communication is over. And an audio message plays. The audio message is played out. It's recorded through a fictitious character which was created called Dr. Anita and she reinforces the message which was uh, just communicated to, uh, uh, to the beneficiary brand by the frontline health worker. Um, you know, I've got anecdotal evidence here. We thought that this was this, one of the most difficult things to change is the mindset of the mother-in-laws because uh, you know, they, they control the social norm in India as far as family health is concerned. I, I, I've, I've had numerous mother-in-laws come and tell me the first time a doctor is coming to visit us in our, uh, uh, in our house, because they've never had a doctor, be it a recorded voice, to come and visit them in their house, and therefore, the credibility of the message. So what was the theory of change surrounding uh, mobile kunji? Well, we have got the frontline health worker who is trained um, <clears throat> in mobile kunji usage. It's going to be part of the IPC process. If that person uses it, it's going to improve skills, their morale, their competence, essentially make them do, do be better at their job. It is also supposed to improve their credibility among their clientele. This is what we, th we which we uh, hoped it would do, that their credibility among their clientele will improve, and it will improve the quality, and therefore, it will improve the quality of the interaction which a frontline health worker has with the beneficiary. From the beneficiary side of it, because it's having higher quality of engagement, it's going to change knowledge, change attitude towards priority behaviors. They're going to be convinced and uh, to adopt these behaviors. Most importantly, they'll have more self-efficacy to adopt and more self-efficacy to discuss with influencers in the household that I want to adopt this behavior. So discussion followed by decision, and then finally, practice. Of course, there's always going to be external influences. You recall there are nine grantees, out of which BBC Media Action is one. So there's a whole lot of people doing a whole lot of things. Even BBC Media Action has mass media and so on and so forth. And of course, you've got confounders like family planning, social norm, and supply side issues. Especially supply side issues is very important when you want to change behaviors on family planning. I mean, you can convince people to use spacing methods, but if there are no methods or any, anything which is available locally, it doesn't really help. So I'm going to go straight into design. I've talked about the intervention. The design was very simple. It was a single point cross-sectional study. I'm sorry, we couldn't do an RCT because by the time we decided we were going to do this research, um, the intervention was already two and a half years old. Um, uh, so we, we did a single point cross-sectional study. We had exposed and unexposed, both selected from within Ananya district to account for confounding. The reason why I'm just mentioning the word confounding here is that if you had taken the counterfactual outside Ananya district, then one criticism was going to be, you know, what about all the other players who are also, you know, promote, promoting um, inf information and so on and so forth. So that's two minutes here, three minutes here. Anyway, okay. <laughs> Uh, uh, so and so forth. So why can't we just choose from within Ananya where everybody theoretically has a chance of getting exposed to everything. The only difference was exposure to mobile kunji or non-exposure to mobile kunji. We concentrated on two specific uh, age groups, currently pregnant women and mothers of children aged 6 to 11. We concentrated on two behaviors, birth preparedness for currently pregnant women and complementary feeding for, for the other and family planning across both. And you can see the uh, the sample was fairly exhaustive. There is, as, as you could see from the, um, uh, from, from the theory of change, there is a lot of research questions. I'm just going to give you a quick finding for three of the top line. It, it, this is absolutely top line, so take it as such. As far as <clears throat> government told us, why can, can you prove to us that mobile kunji does not, has not become a crutch? Which means that what is to stop a frontline health worker going and just simply playing out the audio and come and say that, look, if they're not willing to listen to Dr. Anita, why would they listen to us? Is doc are they going to stop the counseling process, right? They certainly did not. If you look at the average time spent by people who use mobile kunji vis-a-vis -vis those who don't, it's nearly double. 
right? So this is a significant change. Sorry. Outcomes of engagement. Uh, another thing which we thought was that is it is it is if the quality of engagement really is better, then it won't be a one-way process. It's going to be a two-way process. People who have got exposed to mobile kunji are significantly more likely to have had a discussion, a two-way discussion during the interaction process uh, than those who did not have uh, <clears throat> exposure to mobile kunji. And finally, the third point, and the more important point, is having got exposed, did they go out and discuss it with others? You can see the di significant difference in here as well. Was FLW a credible source of state-specific information? Yes, for family planning, for birth preparedness, as well as for complementary feeding, people who use mobile kunji vis-a-vis -vis people who don't uh, have exposure to mobile kunji, the difference is a significant at 1% across all the three parameters. If you have look at level of trust on the FLW, FLWs who use mobile kunji are more trustworthy and credible than those who don't. And this is not from the FLW angle, this is from the beneficiary angle. And finally, three quick indicators on behavior change. Simple, doable actions surrounding birth preparedness. What is being promoted is please keep the phone number of the frontline health worker because as an emergency, she's the person who's going to come and help you. People who are exposed are significantly more likely. Uh, in fact, this is a verifiable indicator. They have kept the phone numbers as against those who were not exposed. Exclusive breastfeeding, people who got exposed to mobile kunji and breastfeeding messages actually practiced it significantly more than those who uh, who were not exposed. Similarly, initiation of complementary feeding. People who got exposed to mobile kunji were significantly more likely to you know, actually have, have a dietary diversity than others. This is work in progress. A uh, very large number, amount of usual regressions are being run to account for confounding. And say, I mean, I think it will still take us about three to four months to finish this whole thing. But I think at the end of it, we'll have a good piece of research. Thank you. Okay. Thank you.